Hello and thanks for visiting our website rebuilderinabox.com Today we're going to be rebuilding the 6G alternator prevalent on Ford since the year 2000. 6G alternator is easily recognizable by the gray plastic bearing cover on the back. There are two different sizes the 135 amp and the 105 to 110 amp. You can tell which one you have by measuring from the center of one through bolt to the next and on the larger amp, the 135 amp, the measurement from the center to center will be approximately five and a quarter inches. On the smaller one, the measurement will be four and three quarters. On the smaller alternator, there are two different versions, the 105 and the 110. If you look in the side, in this area right here, you'll see groups of wires coming up from the winding going up to the rectifier. The 105 amp will have a single wire going up and the 110 amp will have groups of two wires grouped together rising up from the stator winding to the rectifier. Taking one apart we're going to start by finding the three bolts with the 5 sixteenths head and remove them. Taking the pulley off, we're going to use a half inch impact, 15 16 socket, hold a rag around the pulley, now we're going to want to take this lid off. Now we're looking at the inside of the alternator. Over here we have the rectifier where all the diodes are, rear bearing, and this is the voltage regulator brush holder assembly. You see the three bolts holding them on. These three bolts are Torx head T20s. Those three there, T20. Take those three out. Then we're going to pull up straight up quickly so the brushes don't get stuck. Looking at this from the side, there is a gap right here. And this gap can be problematic removing the regulator or installing the regulator because the brush can tend to fall down into this area right here, this groove, and get stuck. If that happens, get a tool fashioned or something like that and stick it in beside underneath the brush and pry it back out because the brush will break off and then the voltage regulator will be no good. What we're inevitably going to be doing is changing and putting a new regulator on there anyway but during installation if you have any problems and the regulator has to come back off the brush tends to get stuck down in this hole and you just have to be careful and get a tool something like this get in behind it and then pry it up because it's spring loaded here we're showing you the three voltage regulators on the right white with blue black and gray with green which are updates of the regulators that are to their left in other words when you take out a white with black you're going to be replacing it with a white with blue. When you take out a white with orange, you're going to be updating that with the black one. And when you take out a gray one, you're going to be updating that to the gray with green. Unfortunately, the way they're mounted in there, you can't tell if the green or the blue or the orange or the black is what you have. You have to take the alternator apart and turn the regulator over before you see what you got. We need to get the rectifier stator assembly out of the aluminum shell, the front plate. So we're going to hold on to it up here.
then the rotor comes out. What we're going to do is we're going to remove a rectifier that looks like this. These silver things here, these are the stator leads where the leads come up and solder into the rectifier and we're going to be replacing them with a rectifier that has this style. These are called the drop down leads and they're an aftermarket design for ease of installation and we'll show you why. Here's the rectifier stator assembly and what we're going to be doing is using the stator over but putting a new rectifier in. So you get yourself a pair of side cuts, turn them upside down and cut up as close to the rectifier as you can get so that the wires or the wire is as long as you can possibly get it to be. There's six of them that need to be cut. I'll show you three. Now, all six of these leads have to be extremely clean before we can go on. If you got double leads, separate them out and clean them independently. You can scrape them with a knife. You can use a wire toothbrush to get them clean. You can use a piece of sandpaper. Or you can use a buffing wheel. But each individual one has to be very, very clean. All of the varnish and all of the paint has to come each has to come completely off of each one all the way around. And you have to see clean, fresh copper about the top inch to three quarters of an inch. You don't have to clean it way down into the bottom where it comes out. Just the top three quarters of an inch has to be clean. Then this is the part where you can wash the stator up, clean it, buff it off, get out any rust that's on the inside, and then spray paint it with a uh, rust resistant paint on the metal portions. Uh, you can spray the entire thing with a varnish or a red insulating paint before you go ahead and put the new rectifier on. Get all the leads as straight as you can and then set the rectifier straight down on it. Make sure that everything is lined up. The bottom of the rectifier needs to be lined up with the diameter of the stator. Then you take your thumb, push the lead back in as far as you can get it so that it's seated back into the groove and then crimp it shut. Go all the way around and do that. Push it back in with your thumb, push it back in with a screwdriver, and then hold it back in there while you crimp it. And this has to be a pretty hard crimp. If you do it right, you shouldn't need to solder, but we always solder. And you need a 200 watt soldering gun to do that. What I'm going to do is take just a minute and go through with a pair of channel locks or a pair of pliers and crimp those extra good. Then uh, this is more than 200 watts but you can do it at home with a 200 watt. What you want to look for is you want to see a little tiny bit of solder coming out the bottom so that you know that the solders went all the way through. This is a bad rotor and I say this because looking at the slip ring where the brush is ride, this black area here where the brush is burnt through 
this brush was still functional but when you see this that's why the guy's idiot light came on and you can see it's it's looking at the top you can see the groove is so deep and that it takes about a hundred thousand miles to one hundred and twenty thousand to do this and you will find this on about ninety nine percent of the rotors that you tear down that have a hundred thousand miles on them this one here would be considered not reusable but it wasn't as far along as the other one uh, if this guy's idiot light came on it would be for some other reason um, this is not normally what you find uh, but you could if you were uh, not planning on keeping the car or you were just trying to get out of the hole for a, a couple months reuse that but uh, our rebuild kit our rebuild kit comes with a rotor a new rotor that has the slip ring already on it and that's what's responsible for uh, a little bit higher pricing for this particular alternator but because of the frequency of what the problems are we include this into the kit now we're going to work on the drive-in bearing the 3 5 16 heads take these three out take the cover off flip it upside down get a 3 8 extension and knock the old bearing out <clears throat> putting the new bearing in you can heat the plate up in the oven for about 20 minutes at 350 but if you want to do it cold and then the, the bearing will just drop right in if you want to do it cold set it in there evenly get a 3 8 extension again and tap only on the outside and keep it going in straight all the time just tap a little bit on this side a little bit on this side a little bit over here only on the outer race never tap on the inner race put the bearing cover back on and then put the three bolts back in and tighten them back up take an extra half a minute and go around one more time just to make sure that those are nice and snug you can even use some blue Loctite on them and you can use some red Loctite on the outer race of the bearing before it gets pressed in first I'm going to put a little bit of rust bust down in the top of this bearing and let it sit for a couple minutes I'm going to set it in the vise you can go all the way down in the vise works better so it rests on the bottom beam I'm going to leave it up here so you can see and what I'm going to do is remove that bearing with this 3 8 extension set it at an angle and get your hammer and just tap that off and once you get it to move a little bit then turn it tap it a little bit more then turn it and you'll get it to move Now we're going to set the front plate in a vise face up. Put a little bit of red Loctite in this area right here on the shaft. Take some white lithium grease and go around the inside of the front plate. This keeps future corrosion from occurring. Just a thin layer of it. Set it in the vise. Set the rotor on and take the hammer handle and knock it down in then we're going to use our half inch impact with the 15 16 socket 
put a rag around the pulley and put the pulley back on. Set the stator back over the rotor into the plate. Go around in a circle and tap it down in to where it goes. When the stator's tapped in all the way, the flange part of the rectifier is down inside the front plate all the way around. Now we're ready to put the voltage regulator on. You'll see that the brush pin is installed. The most important part is to make sure that all three of these are tightened down. If you've ever done a head gasket, that's how you want to do this job. Make them all snug and then turn them a quarter of a turn and then turn them another quarter of a turn and go around in a pattern. So I'm just finishing tightening these up as tight as they'll go before they start to break the plastic or strip out you want them very snug. Then I'm ready to pull the pin. And you hear the brushes click down in there. Now we're getting ready to push the plastic tolerance ring into the rear plate. You'll notice the uh, lineup pin right there. There's three of them. You have to get those lined up in these three slots in the rear plate. Then once you get that in there, we're going to want to put a couple drops of oil and give it a thin coat of oil all the way to the inside of that tolerance ring. Then put a couple drops on the shaft. and Spread that all around. Then we're going to set the lid on. Put the bolts through and tighten them all the way down to where they're just barely snug. Now the bolts are still kind of loose. Set the bearing on. Get it started a little bit and then get yourself a uh, 10 millimeter or 3 8 socket. Set it on the center. Just tap it in, put the lid on, and finish tightening up the bolts.